Hello and welcome to another Comfy UI Fundamentals tutorial. We're going to be covering face restoration in this session. And to do that, we're going to be including a whole bunch of, uh, well, two or three custom nodes that are specifically designed for face restoration. And there are ways of doing this, um, this stuff using just the standard kind of tool set and some basic kind of nodes, but it's so complicated there's just no point really in me showing that. Um, we're going to be using the same kind of setup we had last time. You could load this with a load default node. I am using SDXL base uh, 1.0, but uh, this will work with SDXL. This will work with 1.5. This will work with any model you, you want to use. Now I'm just using it because it's getting me the image that I need to use to um, demonstrate the, the um, process. And in order to do this process, I've made it so that we've got two German soldiers from World War II facing the camera and standing. So we've got their faces at a mid-distance. So it's the, the distance at which faces tend to get messed up in SD is around this distance from the camera. And um, any closer, and it's usually fine, it's rarely messed up. But this this process I'm teaching will show you how to do this this whole process at further distances like than you would normally be doing, but this will work just as well up close to the camera as well, if you need it to. So to start off, you're going to need two load images. You can choose uh, some faces that are familiar to you that you just want to use. Uh, you could choose an image with multiple faces in it, but that's uh, probably not within the scope of this particular tutorial. Um, but uh, this method that we are going to use um, at, at one point during this will be able to handle multiple faces. It just, uh, yeah, just, just get two with faces and uh, you can deal with that stuff if you want to go further than that. All right. And to start off, it has generated this image. And as you can see, there's some oddities in these faces. It's They're, they're indistinct. Um, there's some weird distortions in them, um, ears at funny angles, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, not, not optimum. You might fix this with more passes after the fact of this image. Uh, you might not. Uh, doing this process is a good way of creating a good seed for upgrading your image with upscaling and whatever. Um, in fact, I've had good um, good results with having upscaling process that happens, you know, one, you know, every second sample or something, and then doing a couple of face restoration processes in order to make sure that the details stay on the faces because and there's a habit of SD just wiping the restored faces if you actually continue to sample too much after you've restored them. So be aware that this process can be accidentally removed if you change the image too much after you've restored them. So it's better to use later on in your workflow. But we're going to use this just like with one sampler for simplicity's sake. And we're going to start with a custom node called the face restore with model node. And this may be downloadable with the Comp UI manager. But you can also fire on Civit AI as the face restore node. So if you are having trouble finding it, you can go to Civit AI and, and uh, you should be able to find it on there. Now, um, I am going to include the JSON workflow of this setup as well, uh, just in case you're feeling lazy and want to download all the custom nodes. But I do suggest you build these systems yourself because it'll be more easy to absorb the information if you actually take part in the process of building these systems. So let's begin. Face restore models all generally will need an image input. Some will may in the future at some point receive latent but most receive image. So we send an image and this one also requires an upscale model. Now most of your normal upscale models will be ultra mixes and 4x ultra sharps and stuff like that but if you put a, a gif gan model into your upscaler thing you can use this to fix the faces 
of your model. If you have the other ones on, it's not going to work properly. So use this one, use a GIF cam. And you may need to download it from Hugging Face or Civitai or something like that. Pretty easy one to get hold of. Uh, also, if you have Comfy UI Manager, you can go to Install Models. And you should be able to find one. The, mo many of the models that you might need will be in here if, if you can't find them. All right. So now we're going to run this image. And we'll, we'll just clone this because then it will be the same size. All right. So Q prompt. And you should see it's actually pretty quick to do this. And you'll notice that it doesn't look like it's changed it much. But it has sharpened up the eyes significantly. It's sharpened up this, a lot of the facial features. So it's more about restoring kind of blurry facial features and stuff than about fixing deformities, this one. So it's useful if your faces are mostly fine or like larger in the image. This, this method will work quite well. Uh, but if it's like a, a really deformed face, it tends to not be particularly great. So we'll put that aside. Now let's try another one. And this one is going to be a Roop based model. Now Roop is designed to replace faces with existing faces. So we're going to go to image post processing. And we're going to use reactor fast face swap node. And you may notice I'm not using the Roop node here. And that's because um, some of these Roop nodes and other ones that use this process are broken. Now there are some difficulties with installing these particular root based nodes for ComfyUI and that's because um, they actually require you to install um, what is it? It's uh, oh, Visual Basic. You have to install Visual Basic on them. So I suggest you go to the GitHub for these pages and install, it'll ask you to install a Visual Basic Studio or something and um, make sure that you include Python and C++. And then when you install the node, it will actually install properly instead of throwing errors in the install process, at which point this should all work properly. All right, so reference images. We need reference images for this process and I'm going to use some people from Stargate, and we're going to use uh, Jack. And the interesting thing about this is it can choose faces within the image, which means that um, if you use more than one of these in the series, you can also choose more than one face to fix. And so the reference is where you choose which face in the image, and it's counting from left to right, which face you wish to uh, use. And we're going to use zero on both of these because there's only one face. And the input face is in the, is in the input image, which face you wish to replace. So this particular one, the first one, is going to be the leftmost image. And the second one is going to be the rightmost image because we're going to switch this to one. Now, if we clone this and we put this here, key prompt, you'll see that it's going to swap some faces for us, which is what the nodes are designed to do. It's not the same as an image restore. This one actually replaces faces. So as you can see, it's replaced these two people using these two source images. And you can see that they're not in the same pose, they're not the same color, they're, they're matched to the location they're in as well. So it's quite a good way of um, adjusting faces. You can also use it just as a seed for a thing. So you could do this and then add a little bit more in a K sampler and it'll, it'll rewrite these faces just a little bit so that they don't resemble these characters anymore, but they're still better faces than you might have with these weird, um, weird things under the mouth and funny noses and that kind of stuff. All right. And so now I'm going to show you. Oh yeah. Um, 
if you put this on two, it'll go to the third character. You put it on a three, it'll go to the next character and so on for input faces. So you could, if you just kept stacking this, you could replace many, many faces in an image. Or if you have multiple faces in one, you could use one image in several inputs and select it using these. All right, uh, now I'm going to show you um, the third one, which is Impact Pack. So Impact Pack is a very, very complicated set of nodes that is very daunting when first used because um, basically they just have hundreds and hundreds of nodes. It's hard to figure out what plugs into what and things just seem like so much more complicated than they need to be. However, the face detailer node is, is incredibly good. Um, you just have to make sure you plug it in properly, which is the hard part. So the most important things where you can mess this thing up are going to be in your B-Box detector, SAM model, and SEGM detector. Now, the second two are optional, but they'll generally improve the image that comes out at the end of this. So we may as well use them because there's no reason not to. Um, you may only have access, to, you may only see the MM detector on this by default, but the one we want to use is actually the Eurolytics, the Ultralytics detector provider, because it is more generic and it works on um, photographic faces, not just anime faces. If you want anime faces, you can use the MM detector because it will, um, it ha it comes with a um, with a different face from this one. This one can also do hand models and stuff too. But um, yes, so the MM detector contains an anime kind of model thing. So with the SAM model, uh, do not use the SAM model loader because you are probably going to throw errors. Use the SAM loader instead because that'll load the right thing that you need. Now we're going to plug this into our bus. There is another version of this called a, a, a face detailer pipe, which is useful if you're using this node sets version of this. They have a bus called a pipe, which lets you plug in just like you plug in all this stuff at one end and then it sends the pipe as a single cable all the way across to wherever you need it to be. So it's kind of like a way of combining all this stuff. So it's useful. I don't use it because um, I find this a little bit more flexible and because I'm doing tutorials I want to show you people more stuff without too much confusion. All right, so we need this base image. And now we've plugged this in. I don't know what settings for this work best. Um, this is stuff that you'll have to figure out for yourselves. I'm going to use this on default settings, which seems to work pretty well. And I'm going to clone this so that we have another one. And we plug it in. Now these are going to be the little bits and pieces that it, it, it pulls out in the process of what it does. You can use these to do other stuff. You could use the mask to do things. You can use all these things to do different uh, image editing techniques like cropping and pasting and all that kind of stuff if you want to use that for those kind of things. All right, now we generate again and it will generate some stuff in here. Now th these nodes are pretty complicated. They, they generally tend to take a while and it will generate one pass on each person that it finds as well. So as you can see, it's it's generated two faces. It's generated the uh, them cropped as well. Now if we go over to here, we can see that it has replaced the faces. Now they actually, the interesting thing about this process is that it's a lot more similar to this original photo with similar resolution as opposed to the face replacement one, which looks kind of like you've just pasted faces onto it by default. Um, but obviously it's not 
always going to 100% work. So you may have to run this a couple of times to get this to, to produce faces that you uh, are going to actually be able to use. So anyway, as you can see, that's a few different methods of doing um, of doing face restoring. It works at mid distances, works at close distances as well. Allows you to replace faces with other people's faces. And if you include a process after this where you run samplers, um, you can further improve these, you can upscale them and so on. Um, it's a very adaptive process and um, I suggest that anyone who's having issues with bringing out good images consider actually making use of face restoring um, nodes if you can get a hold of them. All right, so I'm going to include this just on with the video and uh, what am I going to do next? Next tutorial is probably going to cover prompting specifically, like all the ins and outs of prompting and syntax Although it is a bit of a rabbit hole, but we'll see what we can do. I might do embedding embedding in that as well. I haven't actually used embedding much, so uh, I'm going to have to learn how to do that first. But hopefully what I learn can help you later.